नमस्कार फ्रेंड्स दिस इज एन जे ये होस्ट ऑन दिस चैनल नाउ दिस इज गोइंग टू बी द सेकेंड वीडियो ऑन अ थ्री पार्ट डिस्कशन और रिविजन ऑन दी नक्षत्रास सो इन द लास्ट वीडियो वी हैड अवर डिस्कशन फ्रॉम द अश्विनी टिल द अश्लेषा नक्षत्र एंड इन दिस वीडियो वी विल हैव अवर डिस्कशन स्टार्टिंग फ्रॉम द माह नक्षत्र एंड रीचिंग टिल द ज्येष्ठा नक्षत्र सो गाइज इन द लास्ट वीडियो एज वेल आई मैंशन दिस थिंग वेरी एक्सप्लिसिटली आई हैव already uploaded elaborative uh, discussion or uh, information on all the nakshatras in my channel this is just going to be a quick revision for all those people who are new to vedic astrology or let's say for example just as a part of the research material as well because a lot many times there has been those stereotypes which have been built around the nakshatra but what exactly is happening in the life of the people and when we take up the charts of the uh, celebrities and all so definitely a lot of their um, personality what we see in the media is something which has been very cleverly maneuvered by the pr team so that is the only reason i asked for the participation uh, from lot many people and couple of the nakshatras which i explained in the last video they did not get along very well with people because it's a basic human uh, nature to only um, Uh, look for the good things complimentary things trust me guys i am a prominent 8th house person if i were to only tell you my ordeal that to what extent people have predicted some gory and negative things on my chart which are completely false bases my personality so the point which i am trying to say over here is that this is just a basic overview where i'm just trying to cover what has been explained in these scriptures i could have just uploaded the documented files in the community section as well but definitely that lacks the personal touch so that is the only reason i have noted down the points and i am explaining it to you in front of you and trust me once we will cover all the 27 nakshatras and then we will get into the deeper side and nitty gritty of taking up the celebrity charts case studies and placing different planets in different nakshatras i also plan on coming on live on my channel as well there is a lot in the pipeline so just um, bear with me be with me and my sincere apologies uh, for all those things which i have mentioned in my last video which a lot many people got hurt because of that but this is what it has been written so that is the only reason i wanted you to come out and um, kind of contradict me over there in the comment section so okay guys let's move forward and now starting first with the magha nakshatra so definitely guys the points which i have mentioned over here because we are only focusing on these nakshatras uh, if they happen to be your moon nakshatra so uh, the first point which i have written over here is that uh, generally native who have got a magha moon you will find them to be little bit plumpy um, they could have a heavy chin uh, round and bulged stomach so guys honestly speaking these are certain points which i have actually found true in some of the people whom i have known very closely like there was this friend of mine with the prominence of the magha nakshatra like his moon nakshatra was magha and in his case he like he he has such a double chin and he has a very uh, small neck because of the body fat so yes the way it has been mentioned is that people who have got moon um, in the magha nakshatra a lot many times they have been found with a plumpiness in their body heavy chin round and bulged stomach second thing is that um, in their case uh, definitely because of the energy of the ketu and falling in the jurisdiction of the uh, sun in the leo sign so they might have angry disposition but at the same time they have tolerance as well because there is always a difference between the anger of the sun and the anger of the planet mars so angry disposition but at the same time they are bit tolerant as well um third point is that supportive for inheritance paternal support or any financial aid now this is one thing which generally proves to be um true in lot many cases this could be case that um if not getting the uh, inheritance in the form of uh, like the actual money or property in lot many times it has been seen that your father was a lawyer and you joined the same law firm you got the same level of clientele from your father or something so this is how this nakshatra is considered as one of the most fortunate when it comes down to uh, standing a chance for inheritance paternal support or any financial aid next point is that 
um, it has been generally seen a uh, little redness on the nose tip and uh, deep eyes and little bit fatty neck now is that true or not write it in the comment section um, next point is that they carry the strong paternal traits physical or like the point over here is that uh, someone who has got a very prominent uh, uh, like uh, magha moon you will definitely see that this could be case that the father in the family is very short or father has got a, a peculiar personality trait the nose of the father is of a specific dimension so someone in the family who is born with moon in the magha there is a strong possibility that native might carry the those peculiar traits physical traits from the father or this could be case that um, no one else in the family has a uh, addiction towards smoking just the father smoke and the son uh, who is born with the moon in the magha nakshatra has got the similar tendency or addiction so yes um, someone with moon in the magha nakshatra there's a possibility of carrying the strong paternal traits now after that um, in their case it has been generally seen that they have got very good presentation skills how to present how to project themselves out there in the world um, they have got very strong charisma as well they are very charis charismatic um, they have this capacity to uh, able to amass huge wealth cravings for materialistic things comes very naturally to them and they are very hard working and they are very concerned about their family name and legacy now with these people it becomes very important it becomes a matter of their pride or their ego and prestige that um, how their actions are shaping up their family name uh, along with that uh, they remain lucky in receiving the support from their staff from their servants and from their subordinates now guys um after that the next point is that uh, comfortable or you can say influential life um, in their case a lot many times it has been seen that people who have got their moon in the magha nakshatra they end up having a very moody unpredictable or a very whimsical kind of spouse um, their education tend to remain good and definitely they tend to remain very knowledgeable um, next few points um, they have to deal with both well-wishers and enemies because of their prominence obviously if you are very famous you are successful you will end up gaining enemies and friends at the same time so um, and one of the peculiar traits which has been seen that it is a different case that they carry very strong uh, paternal traits in their personality in their persona but at times they get less happiness from their father um, next point they are a bit practical in life's undertakings inner pride and inner drive to excel in life and now guys as you know that the first two padas of the magha they carry the strong energies of the gandhant so if let's say for example your moon is in the magha nakshatra but in the first pada or the second pada then this could be a um, vulnerable sign in the matters of the health of the native uh, now guys after that now we will have our discussion on the purva falguni nakshatra so um, certain traits uh, which you will find if um, your moon is placed in the purva falguni nakshatra so um, these natives are considered as fortunate from birth um, there's a strong like i would say they get chance to do lot many national international travels they are very soft spoken a recipient of many accolades and awards and it, it gets more applicable if the native is also in public or in government domain and um, it has been generally seen that uh, you will find these people definitely they have got very attractive personality but they are more on the wheatish side of the complexion now again guys over here as well there are like lot many points which are getting applicable and which are not getting applicable like i still remember um, the girl I dated back in my college time, she was a typical Pura Falguni and she was exceptionally very fair. So, but again, um, so that is the only reason. Do not take it as a, because we have not actually started doing the proper analysis. Over here, whatever has been written in the scriptures, I'm just calling out for your opinions and collective views over there. Now, definitely when I say Vitish kind of complexion, so we have to take into consideration uh, country, era, culture, 
you might be born in Scandinavia, like in Norway or uh, Sweden or some country. But compared to the complexion of the rest of the family members, you might be a little bit on the wheatish side. That is what I meant over here. So, um, but the personality of these poor of Falguni native tend to remain very attractive. And like the way I mentioned, uh, they tend to remain very affluent and they get respected in society. Now, next point is that um, their nerves remain prominently visible. So in Hindi, we call that nase. So people who have got very prominent visible uh, nerves um, on their body, that could be one sign that your moon is placed in the Pudo Falguni Nakshatra. They are quick to assess the pros and cons of any given situation. Targeted victims of gossips or backbiting. Now that is one of the cases which I have seen in lot many cases where uh, because the Venus in people tend to remain very vivacious, they glow a lot, they have got a very happy, friendly, social nature. Now whatsoever the case is, but in lot many times it has been seen that um, they easily become a target uh, for pe other people to gossip behind their back. Um, and definitely guys, when we talk about these are among those people who have got very proud kind of demeanor, very kind of very um, regal kind of body language. Uh, next point is that uh, in their case, you will definitely find lot many Purva Falguni native taking interest in the artistic things. So artistic interest, um, they are not considered as a very fast worker, like which could be a domain of the uh, Hasta Nakshatra or the Ashwini people are like super fast. But yes, um, they are generally considered as they are very slow worker, which a lot many times borders around the laziness means even if a person is putting or doing his job or work in a faster natural pace, but to a normal person, it might uh, look as this person is a little bit slow. It's not that fast worker. I still remember guys when I uh, when I was in Canada and initially when I was doing uh, part time jobs uh, and all. So I, I, I did job in Tim Hortons, in cafes, in all these places. And they used to tell me that, okay, it will be very difficult for you to survive in um, like any cafe, uh, which has got very high traffic because the turnaround time has to be very less and you have to be very, very fast. And looking at me, someone who wants to gossip, who wants to take his own time, like, okay, you will not be able to survive. So the point which I'm saying uh, for the poor Falguni native is that um, in lot many cases, they are seen as if you will compare their pace with the pace of a Ashwani, you might find them a little bit slow. Um, now, uh, they are very fond of cars and vehicles. Um, the next point is that uh, destiny plays a significant role in their success. Um, they are very smart enough to see through any commercial or financial gain in business dealings. So like the point which I'm saying over here is that like, uh, like while socializing or like if you are operating or working in any business. So you're very um, opportunistic could be one word or you're very smart enough or very adroit enough to see any financial opportunity even in the face of any um, obstacle. So in that regard, these natives are considered as very fortunate. So yes, guys, that is about the Puro Falguni Nakshatra. Now moving ahead. Now when we talk about the Uttara Falguni Nakshatra. So if your moon is placed in the Uttara Falguni Nakshatra, so these people are very respected in the society, uh, very respectful life. They consider themselves as very supreme. They are very soft spoken. They love travels. Uh, they are very justice loving. They are very fortunate in the worldly matters of life. They are lucky in the matters of inheritance. And in short, they are more successful than their capabilities. Like the way a lot many times what happen is that um, like if your talent, your expertise is of five, but those people are lucky that they get the platform or life, give them equal level of opportunities so that uh, their talent is of five and they get success equal into five. But in all those cases where this ratio varies. So in the case of the Uttara Falguri, they might be a deserving candidate for, let's say, for example, uh, to be working on a hundred thousand dollars worth of package but destiny puts them in a place where they might be making 150,000 or 200,000 so more than their capacity where luck plays a very important role um, apart from that guys um, um, they're very good leader 
or they have got very inspiring qualities like their charm, their aura, their mannerism definitely inspire a lot many people. Um, they are very talented and capacity to do something which is going to uplift the society, community or where there is a capacity to attain greatness. Um, they are very good critic as well. Uh, again, um, even in their case as well, uh, all the Falguni nakshatras somehow has been mentioned with, uh, they are not considered as very fair, which could be the domain of slightly the domain of the Rohini nakshatra, for example. So yeah, they are um, generally seen to be having a very wheatish kind of complexion. Uh, definitely they have got artistic talents, anything to do with the music and all, they could be very blessed in that. So artistic interest or talents and whatever they do, there's a strong possibility of being efficient, doing your job with complete efficiency. And along with that, um, there's a little bit of the amorous in the matters of woman or more sensuality, which has been seen. So I don't know how to pronounce this word amorous. So yeah, I mean to say, uh, yeah, so a lot will be dependent on how, how the whole chart is uh, placed, how Venus is placed, how Mars is placed, which houses they are ruling or they are uh, like expecting and all. But in short, the innate nature of this nakshatra over there, there's a possibility of uh, heightened sensuality. So a bit amorous in the matter of woman or a little bit more sensual. And uh, when it comes down to their family life, so the energy, the innate spark or energy of this nakshatra is not very harmonious for too many children, like the way which could be a domain of the Pushya nakshatra, which we have discussed in the last video, which promotes childbirth. So yeah, it has been found that uh, in these uh, natives case, uh, less children or less grandchildren. Next point is that a strong moon will make them very deeply insightful and an afflicted moon will make them boastful liar. They get well supported by females in all form. This could be a female as a sister, as a follower, as a lover, as a partner, spouse, in whichever way. They get very well supported by females. Um, and if you will find that moon being placed in the Virgo, side of Uttara Falguni because Uttara Falguni falls in the jurisdiction of two zodiac signs. So if you will find that moon is uh, placed in the Virgo side of the Uttara Falguni, um, it will enhance the feminine qualities to an extent that it will be more prominently visible on a man as well. So like, see guys, we cannot stereotype this thing, but there are like certain things which comes naturally to everyone. Like the way uh, females give more attention to their grooming, to their looks, to their embellishment and all. Guys might be more um, driven towards being rugged and those sort of masculinity to prove that. So the point which I'm saying over here is that uh, if someone who has got a, a moon being placed in the Virgo side of the Uttara Falguni, and even in the case of a man, he might be more um, kind of, you know, inclined towards a uh, nail paint, uh, long hair, or that feminine spark will be very visible in the personality of that native. So yes guys, this is about Uttara Falguni. Now uh, moving ahead to the uh, Hasta Nakshatra. So guys, um, few points which I have mentioned for the Hasta Nakshatra. First of all, um, these people tend to remain very recognized in the society. Uh, and there is a strong um, eagerness to be affluent. Like these are not among those people who will be contented wheresoever they are. They want to work hard and they want to be affluent and seen as affluent in this society. Um, they tend to remain very immaculate and highly skilled. So when I say immaculate, it means that um, their um, way of working is very flawless. And that is how they want to come across. And yes, they are highly skilled. Uh, now the next point is that success attained through self-initiated efforts makes them a bit rough, straightforward, and far away from buttering, uh, dedicated, self-preserved or devoted to their skill profession, skills of hand. So, okay, I'll just break it down, summarize. So the point which I'm trying to say over here is that just because um, in lot many cases, um, um, the Hasta Nakshatra natives, they end up uh, finding success because of their own diligent hard work and efforts. Because of that, they all the time, they kind of uh, abhor or they dislike 
people who are climbing the ladder of success because of the buttering because of the reference because of the nepotism because of any approach and there this strong likes and dislike many times um, you know um, makes them um, kind of uh, make people envious towards them their straightforwardness their fairness a lot many times makes uh, these people little bit envious uh, in the eyes of other people and uh, along with that the good part is that they are very devoted uh, to their skill to their profession like hast nakshatra native is one among those who will be in love with his job who will be very passionate about his job uh, and along with that definitely um, they are very skilled uh, with their hand uh, next point is that um, some sort of um, traits which can be very um, strongly visible in their personality in their physical uh, appearance traits which you will find in their body in their physical appearance so these natives tend to have very broad palm little bit fatty thighs round shins and wrist and sort of casual fascination with some form of intoxicant next point is that you will find these people to be very wise they never face any real crunch or scarcity of money and they are generally blessed with male child uh, next point is that um, there is a little possibility of um, these guys being little bit jealous at times they are devoid of any biasness they are very tender from inside very soft from inside who many times get misinterpreted or perceived as someone who is very rigid or very ferocious the next point is that guys um these natives tend to remain highly skilled expert in their work uh, that um, they take any fault finding on their work to the heart which also becomes a reason for their misconstrued image so because a lot many times we come across those people who are putting their heart and soul in their work and after that if someone who is not very knowledgeable is going to uh, kind of judge them so those sort of judgmental comments and all do not get along well with them so that is the only reason they are very highly skilled they are expert in their work to such an extent that any fault finding on their work they very easily take it to their heart and which becomes a reason for their misconstrued image in the society uh, the next point is that there is a high possibility for a moon hasta native to be famous in their line of work um they are generally found in the fields of sculpture making um they could be very successful surgeon engineers performing artist mathematician astrologer athlete if moon is afflicted um these could be a dark web scammer or pickpocketers or like someone who is skilled but making use of his skill in order to harm other people or making money through questionable means now guys the next nakshatra is the chitra so the points which i have mentioned they are very fond of bright and multi colors which generally is found in their wardrobe choices so a uh, chitra nakshatra prominent person is very easy to discover in the crowd because of their bright multi color uh, clothing choices um, they have got very distinctive likes and dislikes and they are also fond of music and playing musical instruments the next point is uh this nakshatra is equally divided into zodiac signs uh virgo and libra uh which also happen to be the middle of the zodiac belt because of which deviation in the personality or sexual orientation has been found so which means uh their matrimonial life is generally filled with obstacles virgo side of chitra infuses strong feminine qualities even in the case of males like you know uh, trying to have long hair nail art uh, all sort of uh, embellishment multi color clothes like typical feminine qualities will somehow overwhelm if you will find that chitra is there but in the virgo side and um, even in the case of the males as well and libra side of chitra is also generally not considered as very good for the marital harmony as well so that also infuses marital discord after that guys uh, it has been generally seen that these natives they struggle with laziness or there this comfort loving attitude and misalignment between their mind intellect and thought process many times become responsible for their failure in business um next point is um 
in their physical uh, appearance you will find these people to have very thin uh, eyebrows uh, big eyes wavering faith and loyalty romantic and flirt at heart and the last point is they are very adept very efficient in construction decor designing engineering painting map work etc so guys the next nakshatra is the swati now swati literally means the one which flows through its own shakti or power so uh, these are the similar qualities which you will find in the personality or in the life of someone who has got a moon being placed in the swati nakshatra that uh, these people are independent thinkers freedom lovers and temperamental like wind like suddenly angry suddenly very calm um, their thoughts are very active uh, fast intense and sometimes provoking which means a lot of changeability in their thought process in their decision making um, staying happy eating good food is their life mantra soft spoken so see um, on a public display you will find these people to be very soft spoken for sure but deep inside in their private life they could be a little bit adamant and in certain cases they might have some sort of hidden greed greed for something deep inside their personality has also been found next point rather than following the crowd they tread their own unique path so that a uh, tendency and inclination which generally comes from rahu to be unique to have their own identity you will definitely find in the functioning of this nakshatra or in the personality of someone who has got moon in this swati nakshatra so now guys the next point is that these uh, natives function well in big or joint families they are very intelligent in commercial dealings perform well as an agent broker or middleman um, they have vulnerability towards allergy or infections gastric indigestion stomach operations and along with that it's a very peculiar trait which has been found that these natives uh, get thirsty a lot um, apart from that um, these guys uh, love gaining pieces of knowledge in different fields from here and there like those typical jack of all trades okay let me uh, get something from here let me learn something from over here oh i met this guy who has got specialization in certain field let me get some knowledge from him as well so these natives tend to be they are like the typical jack of all trades um, next point is that they have this innate interest towards occult or mysticism and lastly they could be little bit judgmental about people's socio economic standing mannerism and wardrobe choices so definitely if they are going to make someone uh, or call someone as their friend so that person in order to be qualified as their friend has to get past in their um, certain parameters of how that person uh, behaves uh, mannerism wardrobe choices clothing socio economic standing so typical swati moon nakshatra will take into consideration all these things after that guys uh, when we talk about the vishakha nakshatra so again guys over here i am not giving any of my own findings or opinion this is just the gist of the uh, explanation of the nakshatra as it has been mentioned in majority of our uh, astrological books this could be um, bhratura shastra or this could be some modern day prominent uh, vedic astrologers as well and they work on the nakshatra after this definitely after we will complete our discussion on the 27 nakshatra then i will get into my own accountability and my own observation of blending the planet with the nakshatra vibration but moon nakshatra becomes very important and definitely when we talk about certain nakshatra like ashlesha and vishakha there is more of the uh, vulnerable things which are mentioned over here uh, in the scriptures and please feel free to um, kind of you know contradict me in the comment section i will feel more happy and welcomed if being contradicted with a valid practical point so guys uh, if someone who has got a moon in the vishakha nakshatra the points which i have been mentioned um they carry the conflicting qualities of its presiding gods indra and agni now indra is a god of uh, rain of water and agni represents fire 
So not only the gods which preside over this nakshatra have got some anti qualities, but also we'll find the similar qualities in the personality of these natives as well, who have got moon placed in the Vishakha nakshatra. That uh, in their uh, personality, you will find these kind of conflicting uh, traits, like uh, sometimes angry, sometimes calm, generous or stingy, generous or uh, like jealous. Um, that's the reason people perceive them as offensive and unpredictable a lot many times. Next point is tendency to isolate oneself from crowd and happily self-restrain, which leaves them with less friends and of no use to people around them. Uh, next point is that they could be very clever talker, uh, easily get influenced, means uh, challenged or depressed with the success of people around them. They have got a blend of extreme temperament. So again, guys, the way it has been mentioned, I will elaborate it again. They are very clever talker. Uh, they easily get influenced because of the success of people around them, like getting depressed, uh, getting a challenge that, okay, my neighbor has got this car. I need to also buy this car. Or my neighbor has flew uh, to Europe for the vacation. I also need to take my family over there. So these are the kind of comparing traits you will find infused in the energies of this nakshatra. Uh, now guys, after that, um, they destroy their enemies very cleverly, uh, very curious to know the secret of others, but keep their personal lives very guarded, very secretive. Um, they easily influence anyone by entrapping them in their perplexing layered talks. Smart in the matters of monetary dealings or to get their work done through others. Um, they are very good in amassing money. Next point is they don't get along very well with their spouses, siblings. So generally it has been seen someone who has got a moon placed in the Vishakha nakshatra that native in not many cases has been found to be having issues with the uh, siblings of his or her spouse. Um, along with that, um, some sort of issues have been seen even in having children as well. So like there are like certain nakshatra which promotes childbirth. When it comes down to Vishakha, it is not considered as very supportive for that. Uh, along with that, uh, this nakshatra supports long lifespan or longevity. So for someone to live long, this nakshatra is very supportive indication for that. Uh, along with that, if um, Vishakha moon falls in Libra, uh, that too in the ascendant, like someone who has got a Libra uh, rising, moon being placed over there. Uh, so all the mentioned features which I have just explained will be very strong. But let's say for example, for a change, if moon is going to be placed in the Vishakha, but in the Scorpio side of it, so it will get mellowed. All the intensity of the negative uh, attributes will get mellowed. They will get lower down and native will be a gentleman. And but still the mental state of the native will be a little bit conflicted. But in the actual life events, you will not find this native to be in a crossroad all the time. And the last point is if moon is heavily afflicted or close to the time of eclipse, full moon or new moon, it could give a bipolar personality to the native as well. Now guys, moving ahead now, um, coming to the Anuradha Nakshatra. So the points which I have mentioned over here, um, um, success or real prosperity comes in the second half of the life. Destined to live far away from birthplace or immediate family, like generally in the older times, it has been mentioned even in today, uh, in uh, countryside and all, all those girls or guys, who flee away with their spouse, with their lover, just to uh, avoid the fury of their parents who are hard bent on getting their children married as per the arranged marriage and traditional norms. So Anuradha generally plays a very important role over there. So um, destined to live far away from birthplace or immediate family and fleeing the house. Tendency of that. Next point is uh, demonstrate the strong paternal traits in their personality possibility of having slightly different from black color eyeballs. So uh, it has been generally seen that because um, uh, definitely guys, uh, this is uh, written more from the context of India, where in majority of the cases, you will find people to have um, black eyeball or kind of, you know, brownish tone over there. But if you go to the West, you go to the Europe, 
you will find people having green eyes, blue eyes. But from the Indian context point of view, um, with the prominence of moon uh, Anuradha Nakshatra, you will find these natives that their eye color could be little bit slightly different from the typical black. Um, they are always interested in hosting parties or celebrating success with food and drinks. Definitely the god which preside over it is the Mitra, is the true friend. So because of that, uh, hosting parties, celebrating success with food and drinks is a typical trait of the Anuradha moon person. Along with that, they are very quick to form strong bond or friendship. Uh, they could be intelligent enough to get their work done through any means. Next point is that they generally become famous in their family lineage. This nakshatra most of the time blesses the native with male progeny or male child. They are very quick to make opposite sex people as their brother or sisters. So I need to explain these points over here because a lot of that has been written in the from the Indian context. So the point number one was that they generally become famous in their family lineage. It is self-explanatory. Second point is that this nakshatra uh, most of the times blesses the native with male child so guys try to understand this thing when i say male child female child over here we are not making any comparison it's just like that it has been believed that you have got blessed with a girl she's going to get married and she will take up the name of her future husband but it's the male child only because of which the lineage of the family keeps going on so that is the only reason that anuradha is a very conducive very favorable nakshatra for the sustenance and the growth of your lineage um, and the last point which i mentioned that very quick to make opposite sex people uh, as their brothers or sisters so guys uh, over here in india uh, like that thing is generally seen that uh, you know like where if you get along very well with someone and um, you want to label that connection more than of friendship but you also want it to be very platonic, very spiritual, uh, within the respectful norms as well. So it's a very common thing where like um, uh, where girls say, oh, you are like my brother. I see you as my brother. When the festival of like Raksha Bandhan will come, I will also celebrate it with you because I see you as my uh, brother. All those traits. So someone who has got a moon placed in the Anuradha, they generally can behave like this as well. They, they are so uh, inclined towards forming friendship forming deeper bond that generally it is a trait uh, via which or how the anuradha moon native generally behaves um, now guys after that uh, life gives multiple opportunities to uh, resettle now guys this point resettle becomes very important because a lot many times you come across those people um, god forbid their marriage did not work out and now um, they have lost all the hope. Oh my God, I'll not be able to settle down again. I already have a child. How will I um, like, you know, let any new person, a new wife at this stage of my life, enter my life and all. So uh, the good part about the Anuradha native is that in their case, life definitely gives them opportunity to resettle. Now this could be a case that, you know, uh, when we talk about those people, like um, whenever the war takes place, now this could be a case that we are seeing what is happening in uh, with the Palestinian people or take up the case of Ukrainian people and all. So generally what happens is that someone who has seen a major um, uh, devastation around him. But still, if your moon is placed in the Anuradha, life will again give you a possibility or chance to settle down, resettle in the life, in new environment, in new setting, in new life. Um, so regarding that front, it is a very favorable nakshatra. Uh, so I mentioned it's a blessing for second marriage or people trying to come out of any major chaos. Uh, after that, possibility to have an effluent life. This is a nakshatra which promotes that. Um, next point is um, they're very uh, extremely emotional temperament makes them a soft target for depression, sadness or melancholy, uh, which makes these native look for happiness outside of their home. Because at the end of the day, we are in a nakshatra which is inside the jurisdiction of the scorpio so scorpio traits will still come over there in different form but it will still be there and uh, uh, these natives end up spending a major portion of their life far away from their family which many times gives rise to addiction or bad habits scriptures have addressed them as secret sinner because we all know that how secretive esoteric mysterious scorpio sign could be so because of 
life's undertakings that they end up uh, being away from the family and um, you call it destiny you call it whatsoever the reason but they end up doing things which but the good part is that even if they have committed some sin there is a capacity to keep it secretive so that is the only reason the rishi prashara um, have called them as gupt papi like secret sinner uh, next point is vulnerability of wavering from their word or inability to stay still or rooted at one place for long um, all the time making amendments and craving for big change clever in amassing money shaky support of fate so uh, when it comes down to anuradha like the way when i was talking about uh, puro falguni i was talking about uh, utra falguni i somehow um, call them as fortunate nakshatra but when we talk about anuradha in the matters and in the case of anuradha it gives a shaky foundation to someone's fate where uh, life will play hide and seek to, with you like when you will be needing the support of the luck to the most life will betray you and when you will be least expecting it something will happen miraculously so uh, and the last point is that their fearlessness and boldness makes them popular in their community with the chances of mixing up with elites of their community now in this regard they are considered as lucky that they find it very easy easy passage towards the elites of the society or community now this could be case that they are already very friendly they are very sociable they are very helpful or this could be case that there is this fearlessness or boldness generally makes them um, or gives them a chance to hobnob or rub shoulder with the elites uh, now guys the last um, last nakshatra of today which is the jeshtha nakshatra so the points which i have mentioned for the jeshtha nakshatra is a uh, craving for the coveted position or leadership role which in the case of affliction comes without doing much or without proving your metal so definitely guys jeshtha has got everything to do with the seniority being the eldest um in any way so um they always crave for those coveted big position and all for the leadership role but the only concern and the question mark comes when in case of affliction without putting any efforts they are just expecting it or they are just daydreaming or they are being just in their own head uh, and without proving themselves uh, second point is that they are prone towards laziness bossiness trying to bully dominate they want to um, you know throw around their weight too much or throw around authority too much so bossiness dependent on others for their work execution at the brink of any danger they rely more on the support from others vulnerability towards indulgent and hedonistic life so out of all the three nakshatras which resides in the scorpio which is generally considered as a zodiac sign which uh, gives rise towards um, which gives rise to addiction in any form uh, gambling smoking drinking so in uh, jeshtha those traits and qualities of scorpio because definitely even in the scorpio the main poison lies in the tail part so at the end of end of the nakshatra which is the jeshtha you will find much of these potential of a indulgent or hedonistic life like partying drinking gambling natural inclination towards these things uh, next point is that uh, they could be um, being fearful from inside same like indra all the time conspiring moves to safeguard your position and status so if you know about the vedic gods about the uh, indra who is considered as the king of the gods who is all the time being insecure that his throne might be snatched by someone else so the same energy you will find in the jeshtha nakshatra as well that same like indra all the time conspiring moves to safeguard their position and status a uh, little bit angry temperament especially in the last degrees of the uh, uh, jeshtha of the scorpio sign in totality you will find a imbalance in their personality and their behavior if your moon is in the jeshtha and in the last degrees of the jeshtha third or the fourth pada uh, along with that tendency to project or pretend your status more than your reality so like trying to be something more than what you are in reality a uh, questionable credibility in the matters of exchange of money so generally when it comes down to your word like the way uh, when i was talking about utra falguni another nakshatra i mentioned that 
a word becomes very important for them like Kritika as well. So when it comes down to Jeshtha, so you call it life circumstances, you call it force of destiny or whatsoever the reason, generally they end up having very questionable credibility in the matters of the finances, in the matters of the exchange of money. Um, and there's a little bit slight vulnerability towards they are prone to lying and they have intense sexual drive. Uh, next point is that all the mentioned points which I have just uh, explained, the traits, will increase if you will find that moon is going to be placed in the trines, like first house, fifth house and the ninth house. Um, and the last point is their true well-wisher friends tend to remain very less in numbers. Strong moon ensures recognition in their community and if Mars makes any connection, they become wealthy. So I will elaborate it. So the first point is that their true well-wishers or friends tend to remain very less in numbers. So whatsoever is the case, because of their this innate drive to compete with everyone, they end up uh, being in a very small circle of group. So they tend to have very less number of friends. Um, and along with that, the next point is that if you will find that moon is in the Jeshta, but basis other attributes, it is strengthened. Now, definitely moon is in the Scorpio, it is debilitated. But uh, let's say, for example, if it is um, based on the, the Var, Tithi, the whole overall Panchang, Yoga, Karan, and the moon's uh, placement in the Navamsha, if moon is strong, it will ensure recognition in the community. And along with that, if this moon, which is placed in the Jeshta, is making any connection with the Mars, it is also a very good connection for someone to become wealthy in the life as well. So yes, guys, this is something which I wanted to say as a part of my inputs for further more updates and notifications on the divine signs of Vedic Astrology. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel and follow me on my Instagram account. Dhaniwad.